Hello, and welcome back to FTL Easy Mode. When we last left off, I had stopped at a store, fixed up my ship, and bought some fuel. Uh, and from here on out, I'm going to continue exploring the sector. Uh, I have 90 scrap, which I'm going to spend on some ship upgrades. Uh, the first thing I'm going to upgrade is my door system. Uh, upgraded doors will mean that it takes longer for enemy crew and fires to break through them. This is very important because you can delay borders and increase the amount of time you have to deal with fires on your ship before they become more dangerous. Um, you generally want to have it upgraded all the way by the end of the game, but for now, one level of upgrade is good enough. With the remainder of my scrap, I'm going to buy two more units of power and one more unit of engine power. With that done, I now have enough to power all of my systems and have two units of power in the engine. Or, since I'm not using my med bay, I can depower that and give myself full power to the engines, which means I now have a 25% chance to evade incoming projectiles, which is great. Uh, you want as much evasion as possible. Um, I know a lot of people like to go all in on the engines and spend all of their upgrade money getting that as high as possible, but I find it's generally a little bit safer and more reliable to balance things between the evasion provided by your engines and the protection provided by shields, and ideally cloaking as well, or defense drones if you uh, go that route. Anyway, we are all set to jump again, so let's do that. There's a distress beacon up there, uh, so let's go check that out. Oh, okay, this one is bad news. Uh, there is a space station that's being overrun by giant alien spiders, and we can send crew in to help fight them off or leave them alone. Uh, your first instinct is to, you know, try to be the good guy and save the station from the spiders, but there's an extremely high chance, I think it, it, it's got to be like 50-50 or higher, that you will actually just straight up lose a crew member in this fight and get nothing in return. And the reward is generally only a little bit of scrap anyway, so it's almost never worth it to actually help these guys out. As sad as that is, we're going to leave them alone, because I like having crew more than I like having a little bit of scrap right now. You can see that jump point doesn't actually connect to anything further away, so we're going to have to jump back to that store to keep going. Uh, it's generally best not to revisit uh, jump points that you've already been to whenever possible. You want to explore as much of the map as you can before you run out of time, but we don't really have a choice here, so I'm going to go back that way. And we don't need anything at the store, so I'm going to keep jumping and try to stay ahead of the Rebel fleet. We have another empty sector, not the end of the world. I'm going to jump up here. Uh, it's important to kind of plot out your next few jumps in advance, just bearing in mind where the Rebel fleet is and how much time you have before they get to the exit sector. I think I can probably visit three, maybe four more uh, jump points before they catch up to the exit point. So I'm going to keep that in mind and kind of time my jumps appropriately. Uh, here we're being offered a trade of one drone part for two fuel. Uh, monetarily, that's a good trade, because drone parts are generally more expensive. But since we're running low on fuel and we're not using any drones, there's no reason to take this offer right now. We have another distress beacon down there that we'll have just enough time to get to, so let's check that out. I generally like to visit as many distress beacons as I can, because they're pretty interesting. Here's another ship in an asteroid field. Let's check it out. And we find another stasis pod. Um, I guess you can come across this event multiple times in one playthrough, but in this case, since we already have the crew member that you get out of the stasis pod, I'm just going to take whatever the weapon is instead. And we got some scrap and a hull laser. Uh, that's good. I'm not going to use the hull laser, but it'll be nice to sell at the next store that we come to. And from there, I'm just going to jump straight to the exit. And here we're being offered the opportunity to sell drone parts in exchange for scrap. I am definitely going to do that, because like I said, I'm not using the drone parts for anything. So the extra scrap is going to be very welcome. And with that, let's go to the next sector. Uh, I could either go to the friendly Engie-controlled sector or a hostile rock-controlled sector. I'm going to go to the rock sector, just to show off what hostile sectors are like. 
In this case, because it's rock-controlled, you are more likely to encounter uh, enemy rock ships as opposed to other kinds of ships, and you'll be slightly more likely to have other negative events like enemy borders, uh, asteroid fields, things like that. So let's keep jumping. And like I said, we've encountered a hostile ship, and it is a rock ship. Uh, rock ships uh, have an augment called Rock Armor Plating, which gives them a 15% to negate hull damage from uh, incoming projectiles. You'll still damage uh, the systems in their ship with hits, but there's a chance that, it, that your shots will not actually do damage to their hull. I don't generally find it that big a deal. Um, but more importantly, you can see they've beamed three hostile rock crew members onto our ship. Uh, this is a potential problem because they each have 150 health, so they're going to take forever to take down. Uh, I'm going to send two of my crew members into the sensor room to deal with these guys, and I'm going to leave this guy who's probably headed towards my cockpit alone for now, because it's going to take him a while to break through that reinforced door, and hopefully I'll have done enough damage to their ship that it won't be as much of a threat. You can see that previously where they could just walk straight through doors, now they actually have to break them down before they can get into where they're trying to go. So that's nice. And with our weapons powered up, it is the standard drill of burst lasers targeted at shields, and then the beam weapon primed to hit as many rooms as possible. You can see the rock guy has broken through into our cockpit, but... I'm not too worried about that. My other guys are getting low on health, so I'm going to send them into the med bay, which I'm going to turn on so that they can heal up. And I'm going to focus on taking out their ship. They are offering surrender, which is good, but more importantly, this is one of the really good deals that I told you you come across sometimes. They're offering a 69 scrap, four missiles, and a repair arm augment, which is great. Of course we're going to take that. That's an excellent deal. So... The enemy ship is no longer hostile to us, but we still have to deal with these borders on our ship. Uh, this is not much of a problem. Uh, I have enough crew that I can keep them occupied and keep damaging them uh, to the point where I'll eventually win the fight. I'm going to get my Engi out of the shield room so that because they're not very good in combat, and these guys now have recovered enough health that they should be able to take down these two hostile rock without too much trouble. I'm going to send my captain in to keep shooting at this third rock guy who's trying to get into my sensor room, and it looks like I'm going to win this fight. I do have to keep an eye on this guy Charlie's health, because it's getting pretty low. But there, we took him out. Problem solved. And I'm going to send them back up into the med bay to heal up while my captain finishes off that last crew member. I'll have him repair the sensor room since he's in there anyway. And if I mouse over some of my guys, uh, let's see, I'll find the Rockman. You can see he's gained a little bit of skill in combat there. Um, Rockmen are not the best at combat because they deal regular damage instead of the bonus that, say, Mantis get. Uh, Mantis crew members also seem to level up at combat faster than other species. So they're really the ideal for fighting other people hand-to-hand. -hand. But we'll go with what we've got. And we are all set now. I've got a ton of scrap again. I'm running very low on fuel again. But we'll see what's around. There's a distress signal up here, but honestly, I would much rather find another store so I can buy some more fuel. So I'm going to have to let that one sit and jump down here. We find an empty sector. Uh, no stores in this area, but another distress signal. So let's jump over there and check that out. Oh, it was a trap. And here we're fighting a very well-equipped Mantis fighter. It's got three levels of shields. Um, more importantly, it's got this teleporter down here, which means they're probably going to send boarders onto our ship. But once again, I have four crew members who are basically just standing around doing nothing, so they should be able to fight off anybody they send on board. All right, it's two rockmen, and they've teleported right into my oxygen room, which means they're going to try and cut the air off my ship. So it's important that I keep them occupied as long as possible, because air is very important. I, I have definitely lost games because I forgot my oxygen was off, and everybody on my crew suddenly dropped dead due to uh, oxygen deprivation. 
Uh, other than that, it's the same old song and dance as far as targeting stuff goes. Um, here they're offering us fuel, missiles, and scrap for surrender. Normally I wouldn't take this, but I really need the fuel, so I actually am going to accept their surrender. Uh, what you can see is that their crew members teleported back onto their ship, and we are now no longer in a fight. So I'm going to send my two rockmen down to take care of this fire that they started. As you can see, if I mouse over, they're not taking any damage. Uh, my crystal guy was, because crystal crew members are not immune to fire, but my rockman was taking no damage from that. And once they get to the med bay and start healing up, I'm going to jump again. You are less likely to find uh, enemy or friendly stores in hostile sectors, uh, which this is, so that is another thing to keep in mind. And here we find ourselves in an asteroid field. Asteroid fields periodically will kind of fire random asteroids at your ship and the enemy ship. Your shields will deflect them, uh, defense drones will destroy them if you have them, and cloaking will help you dodge them. Uh, so they're generally not too much of a problem. They will do damage, though, so it is important to keep aware of the fact that they're there. So with my weapons warmed up, I am going to target, again, as many of their rooms as I can hit. And you can see, I believe it was like a stray asteroid that hit my oxygen room, so I'm going to send two crew members over there to repair that. Um, sending my humans over because they move faster, so it'll get fixed more quickly. And remember to cloak to dodge that big incoming missile, which, like I said, is not completely infallible. Um, but thankfully it didn't actually kill that crew member outright. So, one more... Actually, it did enough damage to my weapons systems that I've got to get some stuff repaired. Uh, they are offering surrender, but they're not really offering anything I want in particular. And with their shields destroyed, it's actually just as likely that a stray asteroid is going to take out their ship as my lasers. And I'm going to cloak again to hopefully dodge this missile. Yep, that worked, and we won that fight. got a lot of scrap and some other nice things as well. One thing to note is that because this is a dangerous uh, beacon that we jump to, we can't access our ship upgrades. You can't do that if you're in combat or if your ship is otherwise in danger. So we're going to have to jump somewhere else if we want to upgrade our ship at all. And we jump immediately into another sun. Like I said, hostile sectors are definitely more hostile. Um, going to do some crew juggling here. Remember to turn my weapons back on. Power my engine fully. There we go. We're good to go now. And I really need to upgrade my shields at this point because two shields with this kind of enemy is not quite enough. It's not ideal. But until I can do that, I'm going to have to content myself with trying to survive slightly lower on defense than I'd like to be. Got another solar flare coming in, but thankfully that started a fire right next to our airlocks, so that will be absolutely no problem to deal with. And neither will this ship. Got more fuel, which is good. Going to remember to close our doors, and then jump away. And excellent, there's a store down there. Like I'm showing, you can kind of squeak through the game with running low on fuel, but at least until the last sector, or the second to last sector, I like to have at least 10 fuel on me at any given time, preferably closer to 20. Now that we're at this store, I'm going to sell that hull laser that I'm not using, and I'm going to buy drone control. This will allow you to control drones. Um, 
when you buy it, you're you're given one drone schematic for free. It's usually either a defense drone or a system repair drone. Unfortunately, we got a system repair drone. Uh, these things are, they automatically fix damaged systems on your ship, but if you're playing right, you should have enough crew members that you can handle that on your own without the use of this drone. So I'm just going to sell that back immediately. Um, they've got some weapons and a crew teleporter, but... I really want to upgrade my shields, so that is what I'm going to spend the bulk of this 200 scrap that I have on. Because it costs 100 scrap total just to get to the next level of shield protection, and then another 60 to upgrade my, react to the, my reactor to the point where I can power it. Um, so shields get very pricey, but it's worth every little bit of scrap you spend on them. And here we find ourselves in another asteroid field. But with three shields, um, I am not worried about asteroids at all. And like I said, same song and dance. Um, your tactics for weapons do change depending on what you've got. Um, but like if you, if you're using you know more missile based attacks or uh, lots of bombs which just teleport directly onto enemy ships, then you're going to want to do things differently. But with this current layout that I have, there's no reason to kind of switch from my standard tactic. And we got some nice scrap and a couple other things, and we're going to jump out of there. Now here it's going to be a bit of a race to get to the exit before the Rebels catch it, so we'll see how we do. Here we have yet another rock ship, uh, this one with three levels of shields. Uh, these extra well-shielded enemies can be a real problem to deal with on some playthroughs, depending on what kind of weaponry you come across. I just happen to be exceptionally well-equipped to deal with this stuff in this particular playthrough. And of course, that's a lot of the replayability of this game. Uh, being able to get completely different things every time you play through is really fun. Especially when you factor in you know, the additional ships you can uh, uh, unlock and the extra uh, hull layouts and things like that. Now, once again, they're offering to surrender, but nope, you guys attacked me, so I'm going to hit you back. Got more fuel, which is good. Got more scrap, which is good. Going to do a little bit more crew juggling once they're done repairing my drone room, so I can go heal them up. I'm actually going to buy one more unit of power, just so I can have everything powered at once. And I'm good on ship upgrades for the time being, I think. I'm going to save that 90 scrap for something that I really know I want. Here we come across more slavers. Uh, we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to fight them, see if they offer us a crew member, and if it's something we want, we'll take it. Dodge that missile. So often I forget that I have cloaking, especially when I buy it early on like I did in this playthrough. And... Uh, and you can see my missiles just, or my lasers just completely did not hit anything there. So that round was a bit of a wash, but that's okay. And once again, they're targeting my drone room for no reason, since I don't have any drones equipped. Uh, the AI in this game can be a little wonky sometimes, but, you know, whatever. Let's try that again. There we go. That's more like it. Didn't do a ton of damage, but better than nothing. And now I can just sit back and let these auto-fire without having to worry about it too much. I am going to detarget the hull beam here because I know it's not going to get through that last shield. Uh, so I'm going to let the burst lasers fire one more time. And they're trying to escape. Uh, and here we go. They offer me a crew member. It's another rock man. Um... I don't really need another Rockman, uh, although I've got this guy Charlie who's only been doing repair work, and Rockmen generally are better to have than humans. So I'm going to dismiss Charlie and take Mr. Booga. So now I've got a very rocky crew, which is not bad. Uh, I'm certainly going to be well equipped to deal with borders now. And let's keep jumping. Oh, wow, that's really lucky. We got a free uh, defense drone Mark II. 
Defense drone Mark IIs, unlike Mark Is, will be able to shoot down incoming enemy lasers and missiles, and they also shoot more rapidly so they can take out multiple incoming projectiles. They're really handy to have. In order to use it, I'm going to have to upgrade my drone control to units, so now I have four units of power available, and the defense drone requires four, and I'm going to buy some more reactor power while I'm at it. And now I can't power everything all at once, but if I depower some of my systems, I can turn on the defense drone when I need it. Um, and being able to juggle your reactor assignments like that is very important in this game. Uh, we find a planet showing, in showing intelligent life forms. Let's investigate. Uh, they're really weird. Let's try to communicate with them peacefully. We do so, and they lead us to a deactivated Angie. Uh, we also get some fuel, some missiles, and some scrap. Um, I'm going to dismiss him because we don't need yet another Engi crew member, but it was a positive event, and we got some free loot out of it, so not a bad deal. And let's jump out of the sector. All right, Sector 6. We are getting into the end of the game now. Actually, I believe this is Sector 7 now. Yes, Sector 7. Uh, it's another hostile rock-controlled sector like the previous one. Uh, fortunately, we have a store right here. Uh, but like I said, it's important to have as much scrap as you can going into stores. So I'm going to jump up here first and see what this little jump point has. It has an enemy encounter uh, with a not particularly well-prepared enemy ship. I would show off the defense drone, but I'm running low on drone parts, so I'm actually going to save that because I'll definitely need those if I get to the final boss. And once again, same as before. And you can see those resists popping up. That is where the uh, rock armor plating was kicking in and preventing hull damage. My engineer over here is pretty badly hurt, so I'm going to send him in to heal and have my rock crew members work on fixing up the engines. And there we go. We've taken them out. My dude Sem is all healed up, so I'm going to send him back over there. And I've got a hundred scrap to take with me to the store, which is very good. Let's see what I've got. Ooh, alright. This is good news. We have a heavy ion, which is an ion-based weapon. Um, it does two ion damage per shot, which means it will disable um, it will disable enemy systems for twice as long as a normal power ion weapon. Uh, unfortunately, it fires very slowly as far as ion weapons go. It takes 13 seconds to charge up, so I, I rarely ever use these. Uh, more interestingly, there's a halberd beam, which... Uh, takes a long time to charge, but does two damage per room hit, and also will breach one layer of shields. So it's definitely an upgrade over the hull beam that we have right now. So I'm going to sell the hull beam, buy the halberd beam, buy the rest of their fuel, because you can never really have too much fuel. And you'll see now that I don't have enough to power everything, so I'm going to have to save up a little bit of scrap again, and upgrade my weapons at least one more time if I want to be able to power this halberd beam along with my burst lasers. This right here, two burst laser twos, a halberd beam, and the Artemis, is hands down my favorite weapon layout for the starting ship, the Kestrel. I, I don't think it gets any more balanced or versatile than this. Once you get your weapons upgraded all the way, you can use all four weapons, and it's just fantastic. As hopefully we will see. I'm going to keep jumping. And this is, this is a really funny encounter. So, Mantis' ship here is adorned with rock body parts. It would be a gorier display if they had internal organs, but the message is clear enough. This is a hunter of a very specialized kind. We can either attack, ignore them, or, the blue option, put your rock crew member on the comm. Now, normally blue options are good. You know, something positive comes out of it. But if you select this one, the Mantis captain yells, Cave-dwelling pebble man, I paint my ship with your p companions. I paint my ship with you. And you just end up straight in combat. So it doesn't really do anything, but it's a nice, funny little bit of flavor, and I like that. Uh, since I can't power my halberd beam, I'm going to turn my missile launcher back on. 
and immediately targeted their shields. Um, and you can see they sent two Mantis Borders onto my ship, so while I'm doing that, I'm going to send my rock over there to deal with those Borders, hopefully before they can take out my oxygen. Yeah, there we go, I just barely got there. With that missile in flight, I'm going to target both of my burst lasers on their shields as well. Since I don't have a beam weapon, I'm not really trying to time things carefully so much as I am just trying to concentrate my fire until I get their shields down all the way. You can see that big missile launcher they have does a lot of damage. Um, I'm actually going to get my guy out of there because I don't need him to be fighting a fire in a room that I'm not currently using. Alright, and with their shields taken out, I can now refocus my fire on their weapons. I don't want to use any more missiles on these guys. My rock crew members are getting low on health, so I'm going to have to send them out to heal. And I'm going to get a little bit tricky here. I'm sending my Engi out of the engine room so that I can then open the airlocks on that side of the ship and suck all the air out of my oxygen system. This will hopefully, yeah, it will force the Mantis to flee instead of destroying more of my systems. With their ship destroyed, I can now move some of my crew around. I'm going to suck all the air out of my drone room as well to deal with that fire. And I'm basically going to wait for these mantis to get somewhere where I can finish them off. There. They're taken care of. But now the problem is that my oxygen system is destroyed, which means these rooms are not going to be re refilling with oxygen. And they're in a vacuum, which means that anybody who enters them is going to be taking damage over time. This is where having Engi crew members is so handy, because they repair twice as fast, or 50% faster, rather, which means that they will get the oxygen system up and running more quickly than anybody else, which means that they will take less damage in the vacuum, because they won't be in there as long. You can see that took about four seconds, so now I just have to get them out of there before they suffocate, and the air's back on on my ship. I'm going to send them over to work on the drone room, get my rock crew member out of the way, and at this point it's basically just a matter of getting everybody all healed up and then back in the positions where they belong. So with a little bit more crew juggling here, I will be good to go. And we took a relatively bad beating from that Mantis ship. Um, I didn't lose too much health, but I was definitely like occupied for that entire fight. That was definitely not one that I could just turn auto-fire on and then go drink a cup of coffee for. Um, and, th and that's part of the challenge of this game, is that you have to be very good at multitasking and very aware of everything that's going on. So I've got 100 scrap, I'm going to spend 90 of it on the penultimate weapon upgrade, which means that with a little bit of clever power juggling, aka turning off my missile launcher, I can now turn on the halberd beam. And now I am going to destroy everything I come across. You'll see. Trust me. Here we have an empty sector. No big deal. I'm going to jump down here. Uh, your temptation early on in your playing of this game may be to jump to the last sector as quickly as you, possi as you possibly can, but if you do that, you will end up woefully unprepared for the final boss, which is a whole nother ballgame, as you will see. So here we are in another asteroid field fighting another rock ship, blah de blah de blah Going to wait for everything to charge up. You can see the halberd beam takes longer to charge than the uh, hull beam did. But oh, is it worth it. Now that we've got everything queued up, I'm going to target their shields and then target the halberd beam. Now remember that this does two damage per room no matter whether the room has a system in it or not. And with this current layout, I can just barely hit five rooms. So that's ten damage right there, assuming the shields don't block any of this. Um, if you're crafty with your aiming like this, you can just be touching the corner of a room and it will register. You can do a lot of extra damage. As you can see, I just took off like 60% of their health in the first volley. This is why I love the halberd beam. They're offering a surrender. I say no, and I bet they're going to get taken out by an asteroid. Nope, halberd beam got them. That's okay. 
Got a whole bunch of scrap. As you can see, the scrap rewards get higher the closer you get to the end of the game as well, which is nice because by that point you should be buying upgrades that are more expensive as well. This is an interesting one. We encounter a stranded rock ship, and it's uh, being piloted by what are effectively refugees, and we can either tell them that God sent, sent them here to join my crew, or I can promise to share with them the truce they have been denied. Uh, I think that regardless of which option you choose, there's a certain percentage chance that they'll either attack you or join your crew, and I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm just going to go with the second one, because that seems more honest. And there we go. Our promises gain their attention, and they agree to serve with us for a while, which means we are offered yet another rock crew member. I'm happy with what I've got, so I'm just going to dismiss them. But, once again, I avoided a fight, which is never a bad thing. I'm going to jump up here and check out this distress beacon. Another asteroid field with a ship giving off a distress call. This time, we just bump into a bunch of asteroids that damage our hull. Um, it doesn't do a lot of damage, so I'm not worried about it, but, you know, it could have been a better outcome. And here we find another store. Oh, with the weapon pre-igniter. Uh, the weapon pre-igniter is really good, basically. Weapons are fully charged when you jump into a new sector. Um, you don't have to wait for things to power up like you do at the start of combat. They're just good to go. Um, my nickname for it is Easy Mode, because it just makes the game, like, laughably simple if you've got a decent weapon loadout. Um, I could try to sell a few things. Uh, that's worth 30 scrap. Oh, I definitely want to sell the repair arm. I forgot I even had that. I hate the repair arm. Basically, the repair arm trades some scrap that you get as rewards for repairing your hull in exchange. Um, which seems nice, except that your hull is pretty cheap to repair as it is, and you always want to be getting as much scrap as you possibly can. So that was an oversight on my part. I should have sold that a while ago. Um, now, if I sell the reverse ion field, which I was not planning on keeping around forever anyway, I have enough money to buy the weapon pre-igniter. That is good news. Um, my hull's a little beaten up, but I'm almost to the end of the game, so I'm not worried about that. And wait till you see what this does. You see, all of my weapons are charging up right now. But when I jump to the next sector, they're immediately full. So if I get into a fight here, I can instantly fire. This is really, really good. Uh, there's nothing there, so I'm just going to buy some buy some fuel and jump to the last sector. Alright, here we go. The last sector. Uh, there's some flavor text here that I'm just going to click through, because it's not really that important. But more importantly, you get a whole bunch of free fuel, they fix up your ship, and you're good to go. Now, this uh, last sector is a little bit different, because you can see the entire map is kind of marked off as hostile. Um, the only friendly jump points you will come across are these marked repair. These will fix up your hull a little bit, give you some missiles, fuel, and drone parts, and send you on your way. Everything else here is basically going to be a fight. Um, so it's a little bit trickier than your average sector. You can also see this enemy flagship orbiting over here. This will periodically jump from sector to sector. If it makes it to your base, it's an instant game over. So you absolutely want to uh, cut it off before that happens. Um, depending on the layout of the sector, it can either be really easy or really difficult. You can see here I started very close to two repair sections, which is great. But this is totally random, so sometimes you'll start off, like, in a corner over here, and all of the repair stuff will be over here, and the enemy flagship will be up here, and you'll never go down there to repair, so you'll have, like, nothing to fall back on. In this case, um... I'm really well stocked for everything. Uh, honestly, the main thing I'm worried about right now is that I don't have four bubbles of shield. I, I always like to have four shields for this final fight, as you'll see, uh, but it's very expensive. Uh, so we'll see if I get into enough fights that I can actually upgrade that all the way. Here we have an automated ship guarding a storage cache. I could just go straight to the cache with my cloaking, but I'll get extra scrap if I attack the ship, so I'm actually going to pick a fight here. And as you can see, uh, my weapons are all fully charged and ready to go. This is why I spent all that money on the weapon pre-igniter instead of upgrading my shields. It is just that good. 
But as you can see, this guy has really high evasion, so it's going to be very difficult for me to hit him hard enough to actually punch through all of that shield he's got. And now it's going to be virtually impossible. Well, I think in this case, the best I can do is just keep shooting at him and hope I get through. There, I, I got one hit in on him. This is going south. Um, I'm probably not going to die or anything, but... I am definitely not winning this fight. So in fact, what I think I'm just going to do here is you can see my jump drive is almost fully charged. I'm just going to jump away. Some things are not worth fighting. And just like that, we get to a repair station. They patch up our hull. They give us some fuel, missiles, and drones. And we are in much better shape than we were 30 seconds ago. I also am running really low on reactor power. I did not collect as much scrap as I normally do in this playthrough, so it's a good thing I have a really good weapon loadout, otherwise I might not be able to beat the final boss. Uh, here we have a guy with a defense drone Mark II powered up, so if I were using missiles that would be a real problem. Uh, but I'm not, so thankfully that is not much of an issue. You can see his defense drone is actually shooting at uh, my laser blasts as they come in, so they are an effective weapon. Um, there are some enemy loadouts that are virtually unkillable. If they have like two defense drone twos running, uh, there's honestly not too much you can do. Uh, Alright, I've got 85 scrap. Let's see where the flagship is. He's very close. So instead of powering up my saving up to power up my shields, I'm actually just going to buy two more things of reactor. That way I'll at least be able to turn on my defense drone. And I probably should farm this sector a little bit more before I go into the final fight, but I would rather get this over with. I'm going to intervene to defend the outpost immediately paint his ship with my lasers. You can see how great the weapon pre-igniter is. I mean, just instant half of his health gone, right off the bat. I'm going to detarget that halberd beam, because it's not going to get through both shields. Cloak to dodge that missile. And I should be able to take him out with this volley. Yep, there we go. Excellent, got it. A whole bunch of scrap, actually. Wow. Okay, um, that's good news. With that, I could either... Yeah, I'm running on upgrades, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade my door system all the way. You'll see why that's important. And I'm going to upgrade my engine room one more time, buy one more unit of power, and upgrade my oxygen system one time. I'm not going to power my oxygen system with one more unit, but this way, if it takes damage, it'll effectively have another bar of health that it has to go through before it'll be rendered completely inactive. And with that, we are ready to take on the final boss, which I will cover next time. Thank you for watching.